Shyam sir, Srinivas sir and Ilaveni madam for giving me this opportunity to chair this session. Now may I introduce uh, Dr. Krishnamohan sir. Sir is a cardiologist, is the senior most senior cardiologist at uh, Continental Hospitals. Sir is also a member of the Royal College of Physicians and uh, he has a very vast uh, career and he has set up cardiology practice in various hospitals across the country. And he has been, he practiced in UK for last uh, several 15 years. And he published uh, in various world's leading and prestigious journals and has presented papers at national and international conferences. May I invite uh, Dr. Krishnamohan sir. Thank you. And first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for uh, giving me the opportunity. So, uh, so far many presenters have gone through what uh, it means, diabetes and uh, many complications like cardiovascular complications. So I'm going to concentrate exclusively on uh, cardiovascular disease or heart disease along with the stroke and etc., whatever uh, can happen in diabetic patients. So no disclosures, none related to this talk. So this is one important slide I would like everybody to look at. The heart disease actually affects people with diabetes twice as often as people without diabetes. And cardiovascular complications occur at an earlier age, often result in premature death in diabetic patients. Diabetics are two to four times more likely to suffer strokes, and once having had a stroke, compared to a non-diabetic person, they have a two to four times risk of recurrence of the stroke. And deaths from the heart disease in diabetic women have increased by 23% over the past 30 years, compared to a 27% decrease in non-diabetic people. And deaths from the heart disease in men at the same time have decreased by 13% compared to a 36% overall reduction in non-diabetic patients. So this is uh, International Diabetes Federation slide which estimates in younger patients who are between 25 to 44 years up to 16% had a history of cardiovascular disease and about 2% had a stroke and 1% had a history of uh, heart attack, this is quite young cardiovascular disease. Same time, if you compare people between 50 and 70, up to 41% had a history of cardiovascular disease and 14% had a history of heart attack. 10% of these people have had a stroke. These are diabetics. And cardiovascular disease mortality, the people who die because of this between the ages of 50 and uh, 70, again, 27% uh, 27 per thousand people died of cardiovascular disease each year and up to nine out of uh, thousand people had a stroke each year and seven per thousand people uh, had a coronary artery disease which leads to their death. So uh, here is an interesting slide which shows basically this MI onset study and the Finnish uh, heart study. If you compare a person with no MI uh, who had a previous, uh, sorry, a non-diabetic person with a previous MI uh, and a person, a diabetic without no MI, have a similar risk. And if you compare the same to same, prior MI in diabetics and non-diabetics, like two and a half times higher risk. And the second study actually shows almost triple the risk of cardiovascular disease. Hafner study was done over 20 years ago. It concluded that diabetic patients without previous myocardial infarction have a higher risk of myocardial infarction uh, as non-diabetic patients with the previous MI. And it just is the study which concluded over 20 years ago, two decades ago, that a patient with a diabetes uh, without heart disease should be equally treated as a person without diabetes and have had a cardiac disease. So this is Framingham study. It's a long study when you look at it. Total cardiovascular disease and in diabetics, a coronary artery disease, cardiac failure, intermittent claudication, these all seem to be more in women compared to the men, except stroke, which actually is slightly higher in men. 
fasting plasma glucose and two hour uh, plasma glucose predict the mortality in persons not known to have it uh, type 2 diabetes in a decode study which is a large study wherein if you look at it if you compare somebody with the fasting plasma glucose of less than 110 and a person with a plasma glucose of uh, over 140 their risk is almost doubled so higher the plasma glucose fasting plasma glucose there is a higher risk of having a cardiovascular death and similarly to our postprandial less than 140 if you can manage they are less likely to die and if it is over 200 the risk of death is doubled same time impaired glucose tolerance also increases your chance of cardiovascular death and uh, impaired glucose tolerance and diabetes are associated with increased mortality from the cardiovascular this is again fungata study Funagata, sorry, uh, Japanese study. And if you look at the uh, EPIC Norfolk study in UK, uh, HbA1c of more than 5 is associated with cardiovascular mortality. So as the HbA1c increases, risk goes up. So if it is less than 5, if you imagine as 1% relative risk, it becomes 5%, uh, 5 times if your HbA1c is more than 7. And HbA1c also predicts MI in type 2 diabetes as per the UKpedia study which was done about 20 years ago. And if you look at it, HbA1c of less than 6, more than 10, you can see the trend of going higher. This is a study where people looked at, it's published about 20 years ago. If you check sugar in a person who had a first ever myocardial infarction, and 35% of them had impaired glucose tolerance, 31% had undiagnosed diabetes. That means it is the first time they ever actually looked at their sugars and they are found to be high and it's nearly uh, two-thirds of the patients undiagnosed diabetes can end up with the first presentation as myocardial infarction. It's a similar one. It's a huge study over 117,000 patients aged between 30 and 55, nurse cell study, basically they continue to follow these people. People without diabetes, their risk of uh, uh, cardiovascular disease is actually lower compared to somebody who slowly developed over the period diabetes or people who just got diagnosed, their risk is slightly higher. And uh, nurses who had um, diabetes at the baseline, their risk is about five times compared to somebody who's never had any diabetes in the past. Uh, type two diabetes, the mass macrovascular changes actually happen a lot before your sugars are actually found to be high. That means they are slightly at a higher risk. Even before uh, the diagnosis actually expresses itself, they start having the macrovascular diseases like uh, 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 arteries of your heart, brain, they can get affected even earlier. Whereas microvascular changes happen only when your sugar starts going up. So lowering the HbA1c reduces complications in type 1 and type 2 diabetes. If you look at the retinopathy, nephropathy, neuropathy, all these have, to be, have, have been found to be better when you control the uh, uh, HbA1c and reduce it and you reduce the complications in a patient who's already got cardiovascular disease. So uh, the ischemic heart disease is a similar slide. So how are you going to do it? How, how this... Uh, actually happens in this group of patients. Hyperglycemia are diabetic patients. They, have de they, they develop uh, uh, coagulation uh, deformities and abnormal platelet behavior, and they are very sensitive to stimuli of any kind. A minor injury to the vasculature can also lead to a clot formation. And clot lysis, is, which is a natural process in a normal person, is inhibited in a person with hyperglycemia or diabetes. So higher plasminogen activator inhibitor one levels are found in diabetic patients compared to uh, somebody who is non-diabetic. Fibrinogen levels are actually found to be elevated and even the kinetics of the fibrinogen have found to be um, abnormal in this group of patients. So we all know about insulin resistance. How does it affect? Insulin resistance can actually affect your endothelial functions. It leads to endothelial dysfunction. It can also increase the risk of dyslipidemia and it also increases the vascular uh, inflammation and it also can predispose to hypertension. So all these factors can predispose to atherosclerosis, thereby cardiovascular disease. Uh, 
Endothelial dysfunction correlates with the insulin resistance. So the higher the insulin resistance, the higher the endothelial dysfunction, higher chance of inflammation and cardiovascular disease. So HDL is a protective uh, lipid in your body. It clears off your bad cholesterol or LDL and re reduces the risk of cardiovascular disease. But in a person with hyperinsulinemia, compared to a normal insulinemic uh, patient, your HDL levels are going to be lower, thereby your cardiovascular risk increases. So this slide basically from Framingham study shows that there is an inverse relationship between car coronary heart disease and HDL cholesterol levels. So the absolute risk of myocardial infarction is higher in people with diabetes. So you can see uh, those four uh, uh, lines, the non-diabetics at the bottom, diabetics at the top, self-explanatory, if you have diabetes, your risk of uh, cardiovascular disease and death will be higher. So this is again, same thing, but it's a 20 year follow-up study. And what do you have to do? So you need to actually look at the multifaceted management uh, for a type two diabetes. So intensive multifaceted care actually lowers the mortality. So what sort of things you need to, you need to look at the glucose control, lipid control, BP control, healthy behavior optimization. So this you need to explain to the patient and you also need to start some cardiovascular protective medications. Steno2 is again a study which looked at uh, what would be the benefit of uh, doing an intensive approach compared to a conventional regular uh, treatment in patients with the diabetes. So if you look at this study, people with the intensive uh, therapy, they are less likely to die of a coronary artery disease uh, or any other cardiovascular disease compared to a person without diabetes. So this again, the nephropathy, retinopathy, autonomic neuropathy, these are all found to be lower, whereas peripheral neuropathy has not been affected despite a tight control of uh, sugar. So it's a 21 year follow up data here, which shows that all cause mortality is reduced with intensive therapy. Uh, cardiovascular uh, mortality is uh, reduced. Cardiovascular event or status, that means the people who are going to become um, uh, heart disease patients is also lower. Retinopathy progression, autonomic uh, neuropathy progression is also reduced in intensive uh, patients as well as microalbuminuria, thereby your risk of developing uh, uh, kidney disease is also reduced. So what are we going to do in this group of patients or any diabetic patient who comes to your clinic? So there are four arms to the management of this group of patients. So first we take up the statins. So there is overwhelming data. I mean, like over the past 20, 25 years, there have been a lot of studies. The, one of those studies is earlier ones was heart protection study, uh, where a simvastatin is used compared to the placebo. You can see it shows that people who've been on uh, uh, simvastatin have done better, especially the diabetic patients. Uh, CART study is another uh, statin for the primary prevention in diabetes. That means even patients without any previous history of coronary artery disease or any cardiovascular disease, as a matter of fact, uh, they looked at 2,838 patients between the age of 40 and 75, no history of uh, cardiovascular disease, type two diabetes plus one or more. So initially they looked at patients with any sign of any retinopathy, albuminuria, hypertension, smoking, and your intervention is just a simple small dose of atorvastatin versus placebo. And the outcomes they looked at is a acute, acute coronary syndromes, revascularization, and stroke. So all arms, if you look at it, everything is actually favoring the treatment with the atorvastatin as per the CARD study. So who should receive the statins? Which group of patients you need to give them? So any clinical cardiovascular disease, if you already noticed something, please do give them statin. Age over the age of 40, non-cardiovascular disease, still try and give them a bit of statin for primary prevention. Microvascular complications, as mentioned, give them the statin. And diabetics with the duration of more than 50, uh, 15 years, or if the patient's age is over the age of 30, they warrant therapy uh, as per the 2016 Canadian Cardiovascular Society guidelines. But do remember before you treat a woman because potentially this can cause problems in pregnancy. So anybody 
who wants to become pregnant, you need to uh, withdraw the statin for the time being or just advise good contraception, the contraception for this group of patients. So what is the low level you need to achieve LDL cholesterol? So previously, we all were happy for 130, then it came down to 100, and 100 then 75. Now the latest guidelines actually uh, recommend in a person who's already got any cardiovascular disease, LDL cholesterol of less than 55 is the target. Improve it is another study wherein uh, people looked at ezetimibe on top of simvastatin. So this actually is redone. So initial studies, ezetimibe did not do very well on its own. This was tried for people who are statin intolerant. But now when you look at it, uh, along with the combination of simvastatin, uh, compared uh, in diabetics and non-diabetics. In non-diabetics, it made no difference. Whereas in diabetics, a combination has actually reduced the cardiovascular death, EMI, and unstable angina rehospitalization in uh, over the period of 30 days. Four-year study is evolocumab and uh, uh, add-on to a statin. So this is high-risk group of patients, whereas in diabetics, and non-diabetics, both of them it's actually got very good evidence. The downside is very expensive medication. The second group of medications we need to look at in diabetic patients is the ACE inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers. So the high, if a patient is uh, hypertensive as well as diabetic, your risk of death is much higher, which is well-known fact. And the UKPDS looked at uh, hypertension in diabetes and it compared a tight control and less tight control. So the target initially they assumed was 140 over 80, and people who have uh, achieved the target, they have done well in terms of cardiovascular event compared to somebody who's never had good control. Heart is uh, hypertension optimization uh, therapy. The here, people looked at controlling the diastolic blood pressure. So if you bring down the diastolic blood pressure below 90, the... MI, stroke, cardiovascular mortality per 1,000 patients is 24.4, compared to 18.8 .8 when it is less than 85. Less than 80, it's actually even lower. So the tighter the control, better it is. MicroHope looked at the uh, ACE inhibitor, mainly Ramipril, and primary outcomes of all-cause mortality, MI, stroke, cardiovascular death, all of them have been fine. So this is another uh, study on target. Angiotensin receptor blocker rather than ACE inhibitor, uh, it shows that it is as good as ACE inhibitor in a patient who is intolerant. So who should receive uh, ACE inhibitors or ARB therapy? Clinical cardiovascular disease, age over 55, with an additional cardiovascular risk factor, or end organ damage like albumin, microalbuminuria, retinopathy, LV hypertrophy, and microvascular complications. Again, if uh, in, given in a lady, be careful. It cannot be given in pregnant people. Certain antihyperglycemic agents, now you have overwhelming data. I'm not going to go through all these studies. I'm sure the other talker, speakers are going to talk about this. Empagliflozin, liraglutide, canagliflozin, and there are a lot more other things. So uh, at diagnosis of uh, type 2 diabetes, you need to look at targeting the HbA1c. If you are able to meet the target, no issues. But if, it is, uh, if you haven't achieved, uh, achieved your target and if there is clinical cardiovascular disease, do give the new generation drugs as per the latest guidelines 2019, not yet uh, updated, still in, in uh, phase. So you can give empagliflozin, canagliflozin, dapagliflozin, uh, liraglutide, semaglutide, dulaglutide. All these drugs are recommended, whereas saxagliptin is not recommended. Aspirin is something which most of the people use, but aspirin has got contra evidence. There is no actual uh, benefit in a patient who's not got any cardiovascular disease. So primary prevention of aspirin is not recommended. And so key uh, messages, diabetes, rapid, ra diabetes rapidly accelerates cardiovascular disease. Healthy behavior and pharmacological approaches can induce significant decrease in outcomes. And persons with diabetes less than 30 years, low 10-year cardiovascular disease, but still more than persons without diabetes, so do treat them more carefully like somebody with a cardiovascular disease. Historically, pharmacological vascular protection is focused on LDL cholesterol, high blood pressure, 
Now it also includes antihyperglycemic agents with demonstrated cardiovascular outcome benefits. So you should treat both the immediate and lifetime uh, uh, goals and then heart failure even without MI or cardiovascular disease is an important cause of morbidity and mortality in diabetic patients. I want you to look at this one ladies and gentlemen. Uh, a, B, C, D, E's are the target for your diabetic patients. A being HbA1c for optimal glycemic control with a uh, HbA1c of less than 7. Tight blood pressure control, 130 over 80 or less. Uh, LDL cholesterol of at least less than 75. Drugs to protect uh, the heart like ACE inhibitors, ARBs, statins, aspirin only when indicated, SGLT2, GLP-1 receptor agonists, DPP-4 inhibitors. Uh, so these are to be given wherever it, they are appropriate. Exercise and healthy eating, which is lifestyle modification, smoking cessation. Don't forget to do your part, protect their heart. Multifaceted approach and individualized therapy. So finally, I want to end with this quote by Abraham Lincoln. It says it's not.